Pecha Kucha 2, 10, Inktober 2020, week 1. Uh, so what I found for the first week of Inktober is that I'm basically using the kind of same tools. Uh, they're all digital, they're all done using a, a thick G-Pen setting and a thin turnip pen for cross-hatching. And I find that keeps things quite simple. Uh, so Sunday, the word was radio, last Sunday. Um, I looked into who... who Asterisk invented the radio. Turns out he was an Italian fascist active during World War II. So I quickly gave up on doing anything relating to that guy. Um, so it was the one day so far I actually haven't used the the word. I just end up doing the thing uh, from the, the the Fantastic Four. Uh, after doing the storyboards last week, I was I wanted to draw him and actually give him the time of day because actually figuring out how to draw his rocky skin is. Well, to be to be blunt, I still don't know how to do it. In the end, what I decided was I was just going to kind of mimic the contours of, of his body. Uh, so really, he probably m looks more like Killer Croc than he does the thing. But um, combining that with inverse lighting on the shaded bits, I think I ended up with something that's not bad. Because um, cause this, is, this is too structural for me, I think. Jack Kirby's got me beat. Uh, and then the Monday was Blade, and I was just like, usually I don't go with the first thing I think of, but I'm like, you say Blade, I think Blade, uh, the Wesley Snipes movie. The first one, the good one, um, so I just got a direct picture of him and then tried to, to draw it in a reasonable time frame. It's not important, it doesn't look like Wesley Snipes, that's better, it's not like I tagged him. Um, this is about the Marvel character, even though he is the, the best, well, the definitive version of that guy, so I kind of... I did the G pen. I did the, this cross hatching, but at the end of the day, I felt like I just had to straight up use the airbrush to to get the lighting uh, for the actual image, and that was the only way I was gonna end up posting something that didn't look, you know, half assed I mean, the background he's like in some kind of shower place with a tiled bathroom. I wasn't gonna put any work into that because God damn it, it's a background. That's not that's not what it's not what I signed up for. But um, yeah. One of the trickier days. Uh, followed, the next word was rodent, where I just found a, a great picture of Master Splinter from the Turtles looking quite offended. Um, I probably spent more time trying to figure out what the joke was about why he was pissed off than I did drawing it. But, you know, clean line work uh, of a cartoon rat man, that's, that's good for me. Um, that's, that's a good thing. So the, follow, the next word was fancy. I thought of many, many things, and in the end I decided, let's just draw Kazuya in his, his flashy purple tuxedo. Uh, very awkward, because I wasn't working from direct reference, and I've been trying to keep the, the difficulty low and the quality high with this month, this year. I had, I've had direct reference, or at least similar, close reference, for pretty much every image I've created this year, uh, this month. But nailing the likeness for Kazuya's face, um, because I, I'm not really that bothered about painstakingly representing him from the images I have. It's enough to know which eye is red and which go direction his scars go. And I find uh, with everything I do, I start with a, a chalk pencil under drawing. And then when I come in with the G-Pen inking, uh, the lines I make off definitive enough that I don't worry about it too much uh, and I've been posting everything on Instagram and Tumblr from Inktober Tumblr seems to be uh, <laughs> I'm getting pretty much no response uh, I feel the algorithms are against me um, social media is not worth analyzing too much because w when you're a nobody it's best to not act like getting no response has anything to do with the quality of, of your work you just don't know how to play the game yet uh, so then the next word was teeth. Uh, I thought many things. I'd spent a long time trying to figure out how to draw carnage. In the end, I was like, you know what? I've never drawn a xenomorph. Let's look into that. And I thoroughly enjoyed, um, you know, scribbling my scribbles from a direct image of uh, an incredible, I think, prosthetic. That's probably not the right word. Uh, you know, a, a giant plastic model of an alien head. And then inking it and adding some slime or whatever to make it more menacing. Um... Extreme close-ups are less work, but they can be more impactful, so <laughs> the more the merrier, I guess, but yeah. Um, the next word was throw. Uh, so the, the, you know, there's a lot of interesting thinking that goes into me trying to figure out what to draw. In the end, I was like, let's just, <laughs> yeah, let's draw King doing a torture rack on Paul Phoenix, because that, that makes perfect sense when you think throw. Um, but, you know, 
you are what you're into. I wasn't sure about adding action lines. You know what? It reminds me I meant to add action lines to something else and I forgot to. Um, but it might be overdoing it. I've also been using a little bit of grey colouring just to help the readability of the images this week. I'm in two minds about if it's cheating or if it's just helping the viewer view. Uh, I go back and forth and then uh, final word of the week was hope. Why did I draw a picture of Galvatron? Because hope's too bloody esoteric. So I just, you know, I thought for way too long about this and just thought, you know what, when I grow up I hope, uh, like Galvatron, I give no fucks. And that's really the way to look at it. Um, Galvatron's not an easy transform to draw. Um, I had a lot of trouble balancing his helmet and or even finding definitive artwork to help me figure out the contours of his helmet. Um, I flipped the image a lot. Uh, I tried to keep it symmetrical. I also tried to make a robot with angular features curved enough to, to represent a, a human expression. How do you represent madness on someone with no, no discernible pupils? Well, whatever. Um, put a lot of work into the cross hatching here. It kind of looks like I used my little cheap grey, um, but it's all line work. It's not very high quality, but I'm happy with what I've got. And that's not just this image. That's the the week as a as a whole. Um, I will probably continue the way things are, unless I find a reason to change. And then sad clown of the week is what I was doing last week. The storyboarding uh, with a friend of mine, uh, where I would come up with two panel two pages of six panels a day and then he'd add words um last friday i sent him this uh, i was getting increasingly more esoteric to make him work harder to make it feel more like he wasn't just sticking unnecessary words on my images uh both at his behest and mine and uh, he was just he didn't really want to do it i didn't really want to keep doing this we never verbalized it but we haven't spoken this week i think it's been more beneficial for both of us to just <laughs> quietly let this die um i do need to say something to him just to clear the air but that brings us to the end of petra Kucha 210 and i will see you next time